The purpose of this video is to discuss the different features and functions of the feedback display object. Now the feedback display object is very similar to a slide object, so I'm not going to go over all of the properties and features again. If you have any questions about any of the specific visual components of the feedback display object, I strongly recommend checking out that slide object. I'm mostly going to be focusing on what makes this feedback object so special. So to add a feedback object to your experiment, take it from the toolbox and drag it and drop it onto your procedure wherever you'd like. Now by default this will be called feedback display 1 and then if I add subsequent feedback display objects they will increment to 2, 3, 4, and etc. If you double click on it, it will open it in the workplace here. Now if you take a look at this, it looks extremely similar to a slide object. You can see I have all of the same properties icons at the very top, all the same sub objects on the side, and I even have pre-formatted side states. So this is one of the features that makes a feedback display object so helpful. If I look here, I have correct, incorrect, no response, and pending. These are just pre-formatted slide states that will appear based on the criteria that I set for this object. So if a correct response is entered, this will show up. If an incorrect response is entered, this will show up. If participant simply does not respond, this part of the slide object will show up, and if we are waiting for a response to happen, this pending field will show up. Now, if you notice, some of the text has some very different characters on it, one of which is at RT, and the other one is at ACC.mean. These are simply shortcuts. So what we're doing is we're actually going to be able to point this feedback object at a different object to which participants will be responding, and this at RT and at ACC.mean will give us a summary of this data. So this is actually going to display the reaction time value of a different object that we point this to, and the at ACC.mean is actually going to show us the mean accuracy of another object that we point this to. Now to point the feedback object at another object in order to receive accuracy for it, you have to click on the properties page icon in the top left hand corner. Now this general tab is where all of the changes happen with the feedback display object. Aside from that, looking at the format tab, this is another major change, but at this duration input tab, the task events tab, experiment advisor, logging and sync tab, and even the common tab, these are completely identical to the slide object. The main property that you'll be interacting with with these feedback display objects is this input object name property. This is going to let you know to what object we are responding. So in this case, I don't have any objects, but you'll want to choose the object for which you would like feedback. Uh, typically it is a stimulus object or it is a probe object, anything like that. You then have these options down here. So am I collecting accuracy statistics? Am I collecting no response statistics? What happens when I collect correct response statistics or am I collecting incorrect responses? So for example, if I only want to show RT stats if the participant responds incorrectly. I can uncheck this and then I will only show incorrect RT statistics. I can also opt to use script activation to determine what slide state I want to show here, but that is off by default. And process pending input masks is mainly for if you have generate pre-run set to top of procedure. Um, that way the pending input mask might still be happening while EPRIME is trying to process this in the background and then this won't actually determine the accuracy or the reaction time until it actually appears on the screen. And then I have the option here to change which display name or which display I'm actually accessing with this object. Now as far as formatting is concerned, this is what tells you how to format each one of the pieces of data that you're going to show. So here we can actually choose how our accuracy is displayed. Right now it is just in whole numbers, so just 1.0, and the formatting is a percent, and then the RT divisor, so right now it is currently set to milliseconds, and then this is how it is going to be shown. And then I um, have options to change those exact same properties for correct and incorrect reaction times. So those are all of the properties that make the feedback display unique. Aside from that, all of the other properties are identical to the slide object. Thank you very much for watching this video.